I just want to share a few thoughts on a topic that I've been thinking about a lot surrounding the subject of, of demons and demon possession, this idea of Christians who follow Jesus, who love Jesus, who are born again. Uh, Christians are Christians. Can Christians be demon possessed? You might hear a lot of language today that uses words like manifest. Uh, they're manifesting a demon. Um, and we just have to bind that demon, that that demon of lust, that demon of greed, that demon of pride. And, and everything kind of gets labeled with a demonic force. First, we need to ask ourselves the question, are demons real and do they possess people? And I think biblically, the answer obviously is yes. Some people consider them the fallen angels that left their first estate, the Bible tells us. Uh, some people consider them offspring of of uh, fallen angels and humans, these um, unclean spirits. We don't know exactly their source or where they come from, but they are real and they are of a spiritual nature, a spiritual realm. And yet they interact with the physical in that uh, they can possess, that is um, reside within the soul, the mind, the body of a human being. For the unregenerated uh, um the, the person that's not been born again, not been filled with the Holy Spirit of God, demons can have a certain amount of latitude with that with those people. Uh, now, how demons get in and what allows them in, biblically, we don't have a lot of insight into that. We do believe that there, there are certain things that open up the demonic realm. Um, Paul talks about idolatry. Uh, worshiping idols is a... Um, that those idols are actually demonic spirits, demonic personalities. Sexuality, you guys, is a huge demonic playground. We, I really believe that de demons are, maybe the term you might hear today, non-binary. Demons are, 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 don't have a, a human anatomy, a human sexuality. They, they, they're, in fact, demons just want to pervert everything about sexuality, everything about God's God. God-given design, the image of God in people, demons want to pervert that. And Paul told us that we need to be careful about doctrines of demons. And we see this in the realm of sexuality. I think pornography is a huge demonic playground. I think sex trafficking and um, and sexual perversions of all kind, and including transgenderism, you guys. Transgenderism is a demonic ideal. It's a demonic philosophy because it takes away that male, female, and just actually kind of tries to make humans in the image of the demon. These are demonic things. Demons are real. They are contrary to everything God. They are antichrist. There are spiritual realms. The Bible says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. So the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. So if our eyes were open, we might be uh, initially terrified to see that everywhere we go and in people and around people are demonic spiritual forces at work trying to sway people away from the truth and from God. And that's why the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not guns and knives and weapons. They're, they're mighty in Christ. They're spiritual weapons. They're, we, we fight with the truth. We fight with prayer. We fight with intercession. We fight with uh, the fruit of the spirit in our lives. And so all of those things. And for the person that is not under the control of and habitation of the Holy Spirit, uh, demons can infiltrate their lives and even in, infiltrate their minds, their bodies, and their spirits and their souls. I believe that we saw this just the other day uh, with this school shooting. And I, I understand there's Things like this happen every day across the world. Um, it's cert I'm not singling it out as saying like this is the only one, but it's it's the most fresh on our minds. The Covenant School in Nashville, where we saw a trans transgender person, whether whether or not this person was possessed or had just bought all the lies and the deceit of Satan, it was demonic. This event was completely demonic. Going into a church school, shooting um, Christians, it's, it's, it's demonic. There was demonic influence clearly involved in this whole process. So demons are real, folks. And this is uh, something that we need to be aware of. Jesus uh, gave his disciples authority 
over demons. Uh, Jesus gave his disciples the ability to cast demons out in his name um, of people who are taken captive by demons. And so demons are real. Um, they're very much involved in the world. They're very much in, in involved in people's lives. They're very much involved in, in government. Um, and I think it's important to recognize, you know, there's this naivety out there today about the, about human nature, about believing the best in people. But the reality is we're all sinners and sinners who aren't saved by grace and filled with the Holy Spirit are open to demonic um, activity like, like crazy. And so we need to be aware of that. When we trust in Jesus Christ, when we're born again, the Bible says that we are sealed with the Spirit of God until the day of redemption, that, that we become temples of the Holy Spirit who now lives in us. There are, there's a lot of people who, who see Christians who maybe struggle with habits, uh, patterns of, of so struggle with patterns of sin in their life, even after they come to Jesus, struggle with addictions. And their first response is, we got to cast that demon out of you. That demon has a stronghold in your life. We got to cast that demon out of you. And I just want to dispel that idea. Um, that is not a demon, okay? Your spiritual residence, your house, so to speak, where spiritual things reside, is now under the ownership and habitation of the Holy Spirit. And light can't dwell with darkness. Uh, a, an evil spirit can't dwell in the same space as the Spirit of God. And I've heard the argument that, well, well, Josh, our, our body, our soul, and our spirit are three different compartments. And when we get saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in our spiritual compartment, but we still have our body and our soul. And because there's nothing good there, demons can still take control in those places. And I, I don't believe that at all. In fact, let me give you a couple of scriptures here. Jesus gave an analogy in Matthew chapter 12. Okay, he said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man... He goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house. Notice that's a house uh, from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty. That's the key word. He finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself that they may enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. So it shall be with this wicked generation. So uh, Jesus gives us a picture that if, if a spirit is cast out of a person, and that person gets themselves a bit cleaned up, but they don't have any, they don't have the Holy Spirit now residing in that space. It's the Bible says here it's empty. And when the demon comes back, he finds it empty and he says, Oh, I can come back in here because it's empty and I can bring some more with me. Um, when you come, when you place your faith in Christ, your house, your spiritual house is no longer empty. It's almost you can get an idea of the doors. Um, being locked by the holiness of God, by the by the presence of God to any other spiritual force that might um, want to take residence in your life. First Corinthians six. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? You were bought with a price. So therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Notice which are God's. What are God's? Your body and your spirit. They're God's. The Holy Spirit is now working in all these parts of you. Um, and then 1 Thessalonians, Paul says, May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely all the way. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God is working in us spiritually, physically, in our mind. The Holy Spirit is at work. So this begs the question, well, then, Josh, why does it seem um, that that as Christians, we still deal with sin. We still deal with struggles. We still deal with uh, addictions. We still deal with failures. Aren't those demons? Don't we have to get the demon of lust out, the demon of greed out, the demon of selfishness and demon of pride out? I don't mean to offend you guys, but listen up carefully. Those things are not demons. Those things are your flesh. And trust me, your flesh is a very, very powerful entity. It might feel sometimes like you're struggling with a demon because your flesh is strong. Here's the idea that we have. Um, spiritually, we are in heaven, right? We've been seated at the right hand of God. He has declared us innocent before the throne of God. But we have a reality where we're still in our flesh here and now. And so there's this tension. There's what we might call an overlap of, of struggle. The Holy Spirit's in us, sanctifying, working in us. 
Yet God has said we're in partnership with him while we're still in our flesh. And what we need to do is we need to take hold of the Holy Spirit's strength and power that's in us to put to death the deeds and the desires of our flesh. And that's a lifelong battle, folks. But it's not a battle against a demon who has control over us that we are like somehow out of control. No, it's our flesh. And God is trying to teach us how to have control over our flesh and over its desires. This is the clear biblical teaching. Nowhere in the scripture does Paul look at a Christian and say, hey, if you're struggling, just cast out the demon. No, nowhere. In fact, Paul says, if you're struggling, crucify the works of your flesh. Consider them dead. Walk in the spirit and put to death the deeds of the flesh. In fact, Galatians chapter 5, verses 24 and 25. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Paul said, I die daily. I I, I tell my flesh, I bring it into subjection. I take every thought captive under the obedience of Christ, right? This is the battle we have against the flesh. You can't blame the devil on your sin. I can't blame the devil on my sin. I don't need to go to some church and have some um, ultra charismatic preacher cast out a demon out of me if I'm struggling. What I need to do is I need to confess my sin to the Lord. I need accountability. I need to be in the word of God. I need to ask for the filling and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in my life. I need to hide God's word in my heart and I need to overcome my flesh. That's what the, the, that's what I need to do. And I think people far too easily think I just need to get this demon out of me. If you guys haven't yet, you're going to hear a lot of this. Um, uh, you're going to hear a lot of this talk about you're just manifesting a demon. We just got to, we just got to command that demon out of you. Now I do want to say this. There are demons that um, in the Bible that are spirits. Like there is a spirit in the Bible of infirmity. So there are demons can be connected to sickness. They're not always connected to sickness. If you're struggling with a disease or a sickness, it's not because there's some demon that's making you sick. Um, it might be a, a trial God's allowing in your life to perfect your faith. It might be a result of, of some sin that, that you're struggling with and it's just kind of gnawing away at you. It could be a lot of things, but it's not, it's not especially if you're a Christian, it's not a demon. Uh, in non-Christians, it might be demonic. Christian, listen, Jesus has overcome. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, demons can, under the allowance of God and his sovereignty, Demons can oppress us. If you feel like you're in spiritual warfare, you very well could be. If you're like trying to pursue Christ and you're hitting circumstances that are falling apart, relationships that are, that are, that are, that are having a lot of tension, you're, you're experiencing a significant amount of temptation, perhaps um, things in your finances or in your work or in your circumstances are kind of like just a real struggle. Those can all be demonic battles. Um, d demons might be attempting to find areas of weakness in you. Demons might be trying to allure you. Demons might be trying to cause you to stumble. We are in a battle against demons, but, but trust me in this, you are not and cannot be possessed by a demon outside of your control. If you are trusting in Jesus to be your King, Lord, and Savior. You can struggle with your flesh. You can struggle with temptation. But those things, again, are learning how to bring yourself and your desires under subjection to the Lordship of Jesus. Pray in the spirit. Yes. Pray against temptation. Pray against the demonic influences around you. But also pray for self-control and for uh, the fruit of the spirit to be growing and made manifest in your life. Now you might, <laughs> you might experience someone who's possessed by a demon. In fact, the darker our world gets, I don't doubt that we might see uh, demonic manifestations of people coming into church who don't know the Lord that are possessed uh, on the streets that are possessed that need deliverance and freedom and salvation. And so we need to be prepared. Church, you, you have to have the full armor of God on. You and I have to be prepared to do battle against demonic forces and people that maybe are possessed with demons and are manifesting demonic ideas or 
demonic behaviors. We have to be in prayer. We have to learn the discipline of fasting. We have to learn holiness in our lives. There's a lot of thought of, um, of demons, you know, being, being in the believer. And we just kind of, we need to get out of that side. Jesus didn't save us, seal us, fill us and empower us just so that we can be possessed by a demon. <laughs> That's not how it works. Uh, and so you guys, I hope this is helpful to you. I hope it gives you something to think about. If you have questions, um, maybe something I didn't cover or something you'd like even greater clarification on, post them there in the comments, because I'm going to take those and, and work on those questions as I form this into a more in-depth study. Be encouraged. Jesus has overcome. He's won the battle. He is victorious. He has, the Bible says, on the cross, he has made a mockery of Satan and his demonic forces. And you are more than conquerors. God bless you guys today. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. And be filled with the Spirit, overflowing with joy and power. God bless you guys, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.